During the Manjaro Beginners Tour, I mentioned that the package manager was getting a facelift. And guess what, kids? It is here. Time to get excited as we look at PAMAC 4.0, the Manjaro Software Center, right now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. Alright, let's begin. I'm on my Manjaro Cup of Linux Edition desktop, and uh, I'm ready to have a look at this. My PAMAC icon is lit up, letting me know that there's one update available. So we can right-click on this and select the Update Manager. You're going to notice here that this has a completely new look. I kind of like this. Let you know that it's giving you your update from the Arch user repository and it tells you the package and version number. The number in the brackets here tells you what you have installed and the number to the left of that tells you the version that you are installing. So let's go ahead and apply this. And then you have the choice to cancel or commit. I really like how th they set this up. It, it, looks a lot better than it did. Once the update is complete, you're going to notice that the PAMIC icon has changed and it's no longer red anymore. And then when the uh, update is finished, we can hide it. Very simple, very easy. By clicking the pancake menu, you can refresh your databases, view history, Go into your preferences or uh, about, which is PAMAC 4.0, developed by uh, Guillaume Benoit of the Manjaro team. I hope I pronounced your name correctly here. Let's close this. Let's have a look at some other features that this brings to the table here. When we open up the package manager, you're going to see that it looks a little bit different than what we had before. You have your categories at the top of the screen. Search, Groups, State, and your repositories. And something that I really like about this is it now gives you a list of the software and then a description. Double-clicking on the name of the software brings additional features. It, you can get details on the software. Basically, it's saying install reason. It's installed as a dependency for another package. Hmm. Okay. So A52, you know, Alpha 52, Delta Echo Charlie. Not sure what that is. But you know what? We can find out. Ah, looks like it's part of the GStreamer set here. When we look at the dependencies. And then it gives you a list of all the files it can, inst you know, it'll install. Additionally, you can click the website link that's provided and your default browser will open up and you can see that this is an ATSC stream decoder. All right, very interesting. So this has given me a lot of information about the software that's available. Really, really cool. And while it doesn't have all the pretty graphics that the deprecated Ubuntu Software Center has, this has brought a whole new level of uh, usability to Manjaro because this has, while it may not, you know, have all the paragraph with the fancy schmancy text to talk you into installing the software or whatnot, the information is readily available from this user interface. This is perfect. So you have the ability to search and this is the toggle here for AUR search. So let's say I want to search for something uh, to install here. Let's go with uh, Compiz. Why not? All right. And you can see here in the search listing, it's giving me information on what I already have installed here. And these two items here 
are in the Manjaro repository. See, uh, Compiz Manjaro and the Fusion icon. So if I double click on this, we can see Rob McCarthy maintains this package. Okay, and it gives you all the, the list of dependencies that this requires. And it also tells you what it conflicts with. All right, so if you decided to install Compiz Manjaro on your system, it would actually uninstall all of these packages from the Compiz Reloaded project that I have installed on my machine. All right, and then we can go into the Arch User Repository here, and you're going to see that there are some packages like the Compiz Core here. And since it is not installed, you know, we have some information. Shadow Kyogre uh, actually maintains this one here. And there's a link to the Compass Reloaded page as well as the uh, Arch Linux AUR page. It gives a list of all the dependencies and all the conflicts. So this is very comprehensive. Very, very nice indeed. Okay, let's also have a look at groups. I discussed this in a previous uh, video when we looked at the previous version, and this still has groups available. So, for instance, if you want some of the nice Deepin packages, and they are known for making some good in-house packages, really never cared for their OS itself, but some of the tools they brought to the table were pretty neat. You can get these here if you want them. And you can install the entire group or just little pieces of the group. So, And there are lots and lots and lots of groups to select from here. We can go into the State tab. And under the State tab, you have Installed, Orphaned, Packages. These are packages that don't have any um, any other that are installed on your system that aren't needed by anything. And you can see I cleaned house recently. <laughs> I don't have any orphans. Foreign packages and any packages that are pending. And pending packages are packages that you would have set to install or uninstall. And then finally, you have the Repositories tab, and you have your Core, Extra, Community, and Multilib libraries here. And for those of you who are actually running mcol, you may also have an additional repository that says mcol32 or mcol64. I don't have the repository in my Pac-Man configuration file because I don't need it. <laughs> I built the packages myself, so I don't need to be connected to my own repo. <laughs> Let's have a look at the options for this now. Okay, you can refresh your databases here. And it goes through this. This is the same thing as running Pac-Man TAC SYY in the terminal. And it's done. All right, you can view your package installation and removal history here. And believe it or not, I have stuff dating back from 2014 and yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and close this. You can uh, install local packages. You can also go into Preferences here. You can tell the software to remove unrequired dependencies when you're removing software. That might be a good idea. Always have a check available disk space or check for updates. And how often to check for updates. You can even have it hide the tray icon when no updates are available. Personally, I like the icon to remain here because I can right-click on it whenever I want, and I can open up the package manager if, if I feel the need to. But usually I use the terminal. Okay, and then we have official repositories here. Okay, you can select where you want to use repositories from. In my case, I'm in the United States, so I would probably want to check that. Sort mirrors by speed, and then you can refresh the mirror list. I'm not going to do that at the moment. 
because I already have my mirror list done. <laughs> okay, and then this is the AUR section, where AUR is a community-maintained repository, so it, re so it presents potential risks and problems. All AR AUR users should be familiar with the build process. Okay, again, see my video in the Manjaro Beginners Tour, and I explain all of that in pretty good detail. And if you want more information, uh, there is a link in the description of that video that will take you to the necessary documentation. It's always a good idea to know what you're doing when building stuff from the AUR. Uh, I've enabled search in the AUR by default and then check for updates from the AUR, and that was that update that you just saw uh, at the beginning of this video. I, I like this feature in that it tells me that there are updates to my AUR packages, and it just, you know, it, it just adds that extra layer of usability um, to this distro, and I absolutely love it. This is truly turning into a wonderful software center, and uh, it's my hope that people will find this uh, very easy to use and uh, fairly easy to understand. Uh, I think it would be kind of one thing that could make it a little bit more user friendly. It, maybe if there were a, a column, you know, with an eyeball button, because not everybody's going to know that they have to double click, you know, to get more information. So I think if there were like, a, you know, a like a column with a, an eyeball or something like it, so people could just click the eyeball. Um, then that would open up the additional information window. Uh, I think that would be a really neat feature. It's not necessarily a feature request, just a, uh, a suggestion. Just some way that somebody who's never looked at this application before would be able to say, okay, well, we've got this Arch Linux keyring, but what really, what is it and what does that do, you know? And then they'd be able to get that information without having to double click. Because really, when you right click on this, there's deselect, install, remove, reinstall, uh, install optional dependencies, mark as explicitly installed. But maybe on the right click context menu, have it, you know, show additional details. That could be another option too. So there's always room for improvement. But I gotta tell you, kids, I absolutely love this. And, uh, uh, excellent job to Phil Mueller and, uh, Guillaume Benoit and, uh, everybody else who's involved in the Manjaro project for bringing lots of great innovations to the table. That's all I have on this. I'm not sure what I'm gonna be doing next, but I'm sure I'm gonna have something equally exciting. Until then, peace out. Mm -hmm.